Heart. Heart. Specifically, what part of the heart? Uh, the ventricle. The ventricle. And so, what are these two little dark, this dark region here? Atrium. atrium. The atrium. Okay. So then we move to the lungs. Oh, well, what is this? Trachea. The trachea. See how you can see those little lines, cartilage there, on the thickenings. So it's really distinct. Now, the esophagus runs kind of along the side or behind it. So this is the esophagus right here. See that right there? Under that looks like muscle, but it's really close. That's the esophagus. Okay, now we have the lobes of the lung. We have the cranial lobe, the middle lobe, the caudal lobe, the accessory lobe, and then here's the left lobe. So these are all the right lobes of the lung. Cranial, middle, caudal, accessory, and then here's the left lobe of the lung. All right, and what is this here? Diaphragm. The diaphragm. Okay, so remember it separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And do you know what happens when you get the hiccups? It spasms. It spasms, yeah, your diaphragm, it's a spasming of the diaphragm. It's kind of just like doing that. Hitting, hitting, hitting. Why does it do that? You know, I'm not sure why, um, what the cause of it is, but that's what your diaphragm is doing, it's spasming. Okay, so then we come into the abdominal region. So, first things first, what is all this dark? The liver, yeah, it's the liver. These are the lobes of the liver, a lot of lobes of the liver. So when you guys opened yours up, that's what you first saw, it's like big livers. Um, are there a definite number of lobes, or can it be different? I think five, right? You know, I'm not too sure. There probably is like a, a common number, but there's always variation. So sometimes you're going to have, you know, different. maybe different. So, yeah. Okay. So there's always biological variation. So everything, especially in the veins and the artery, well, the arteries and veins, they're not always going to look exactly the way the picture is or the way somebody else's is. So you kind of want to make sure that you know, like, okay, this branches off from this and that. It's not always going to look the same. So here we go. So we identify the liver. So here we have the stomach. So what is this coming connecting to the stomach? The esophagus? Yeah, the esophagus that first leads into the stomach, the esophagus. Oh, I was just guessing you can't see it. <laughs> oh, okay. So there it is there. You see it now? Right there. So that's the esophagus. So what happens? You get heartburn, you get some stomach acid going to your esophagus. Fun. Okay, so we have parts of the stomach. So right in when the esophagus kind of comes into the stomach. This region is known as the cardiac portion of the stomach, so right in here. That's the cardiac portion of the stomach. Mm -hmm. Then we have the fundus of the stomach, kind of that blind end of the stomach that doesn't connect to anything else. So it's just an end of the stomach, so there it is there. Mm -hmm. That's the fundus. This is known as the body, right kind of under the cardiac portion. The cardiac is just a small area right up in the top. This is the body. And then here is the pyloric portion of the stomach, which connects to the pyloric sphincter. See how there looks like there's a, a tightening in there? Mm -hmm. a tightening right in there? This is the pyloric sphincter. It's a circular band of muscle that contracts. And what it does, it prevents kind of stomach acids and foods that haven't, are not ready to go into the small intestine from getting into the small intestine. Again, there's another one down in the anus, the anal sphincter. Holds everything in till it's ready to come out, or till you're ready to let it out. Okay, but this one here is involuntary. You don't control this one. The anal one, you can control it. Okay, then we go into here. Now this, leading from the stomach, this is part of the small intestine, but it's a special part. We have a special name for it called the what? Duodenum. The duodenum. The duodenum, the duodenum. That's fine, however you want to say it, however you can spell it better. <laughs> Duodenum is probably how you spell it the correct way. Now, within the first kind of turn of the duodenum is this diffuse organ here, and this is the pancreas. Okay, so this is in here is the pancreas. It doesn't really look like much. It just looks like, you know, other organs like muscle or something. So then we travel. Here we have duodenum. You know, it kind of does this, duodenum. Small intestine, small intestine, small intestine. Connects the small intestine together. These are called the mesentries. They hold everything kind of together. And here you can see there's some vessels, you know, so we have the intestinal arteries and veins that connect here. Then we have this other thing that a lot of people thought was the stomach. This is the what? Cecum. The cecum. Okay, so connecting, it's all twisted around. There we go. 
So, connecting from the small intestine there we go, to the cecum, it's another kind of special portion of the small intestine. Jejuno. The jejuno ileum. <laughs> it enters the cecum. So jejuno ileum enters the cecum. So if we have a pen close to the cecum and we say what part of the intestine is this, you'll say it's the jejuno ileum of the small intestine or whatever, okay? So before the cecum? Before the cecum. It enters the cecum. Then you have the cecum and then what leaves the cecum is you're now starting with large intestine. Um, like I said, I, we probably won't be e that evil that we're gonna pin it, you know, with a large intestine because we'd have to unravel everything and pin it out for you to show you that this is entering and this is leaving because that's the only how you're gonna know. So we'd have to know it then, <laughs> pretty much. You wanna know it, yeah. You wanna be able to at least kind of tell <coughs> which kind of comes in and where it's going out. So here it's leaving, here kind of, we're start here, it's leaving the cecum. Then we have the large intestine. There's three parts to it. I guess you guys don't have to know it this quarter. <laughs> Um, there's the ascending, transverse, and descending. Oh. Ascending connects to the cecum, transverse kind of comes across, descending is kind of coming down, and then we kind of have the colon here. So here's the colon here. Guy had a good meal before he died. There's the colon. So we lead, you know, back into here, and we'll get through that to that right in just a second. And then here, what's this little tongue-like organ? Spleen. 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 Okay, don't confuse it with some of the lobes of the liver. It's going to look like a tongue. There's the spleen. What is this organ here? Kidney. The kidney. Right above the kidney is a little small kind of circular the organ. Adrenal gland. The adrenal gland. Now if you look, you notice the kidneys don't lie. The one's up higher than the other. The right kidney is always up higher than the left kidney. That's just the way that they are made. And then here, leading from the kidney to the urinary bladder is the ureter. So this is what a ureter looks like. It's tiny. So don't be afraid if you can't find yours. You might have cut it already just kind of when you're looking around. So don't be, you know, like, oh, I can't find the ureter. Oh, life is over. It's okay. <laughs> You'll find it. It's the only thing that's going to look like this. And if we do pin it, it's going to lead from the kidney. And it's going to go down into this area. It's pretty straightforward. And it's not going to be injected with latex. Okay, so you know that it's not going to be a vessel. Okay, it's going to be the ureter. So the beds of fat. Okay, so we put his organs back in him. So we go down into the male, the urogenital system. <coughs> okay, so before you cut him open, you saw this, the scrotum. Now within the scrotum, you have another pouch-like uh, area here. This is the cremasteric pouch. Within the cremasteric pouch, you find the testicle. So the cremasteric pouch, though, surrounds a cavity, and that's known as the vaginal cavity. So if I'm putting it in here, my probe in here, I'm in the vaginal cavity, okay? In the vaginal cavity, okay? So there's something on the practical that says name the area that is surrounded by the cremasteric pouch. That is the vaginal cavity. Why it's called that, I don't know if it's a male. Is that the same thing as the inguinal canal? The inguinal canal is like this part right in here when it first kind of enters, like the opening. Oh. So that's the inguinal canal right there. Okay, so okay. inside. Yeah, so inside the area that surrounds, like the cavity that is surrounded by the cremasteric pouch is the vaginal cavity. Even for a boy? That's a boy, only oh. the boys. The females don't have a vaginal cavity. Well, in their vagina, but you don't really mean that. <laughs> but here, when we're talking about it, if it's, you know, if we want to know it, it's always in the male. You don't have to worry about that in the female. Okay. Okay, always in the male. I don't know why, again, why it's called the vaginal cavity if it's found in the male. It's just the way, what they wanted to name it. Okay. So then, within that is the testicle. So here, see, this is the cremasteric pouch. We've opened it up, and then we've taken out the testicle and the epididymis. Now, there's some mesentery that connects the testicle, the testi, to the cremasteric pouch. This is known as the mazorchium. Okay, the mazorchium connects it. So here, that's what we're looking at here, that connective tissue there. Okay, there's the mazorchium. So it's right in here, this kind of, this mesentery. Now, as we get down to the end of the testicle and the epididymis, it thickens, and that's known as the gubernaculum. It's a thickening of the mazorchium, and what the mazorchium, the gubernaculum do, is they hold the testicle in there, 
so it's kind of tightly bound. It's not bouncing around, it's kind of held down.